I'm uh, Philip Robinson. I'm um, showing here at Polychrome Fine Arts. Um, I started in art fairly young. I was always drawing. I was always building stuff. I, I thought for a long time I was going to be a scientist. It didn't work out. And in later high school, I realized that you know art was the important thing and that the other things were interesting, but that I really needed to make things. So I went from there to uh, Victoria College of Art and uh, finished um, a diploma program there that was great. They're really good at teaching you how to paint. Um, after that I went to the Ontario College of Art and Design. Their painting program wasn't really what I wanted, so I ended up spending an awful lot of time in, um, in the metal shop and I got really interested in sculpture. Uh, shortly after that, I was concentrating mostly on sculpture and have recently come back to painting, but the, the sculptural concerns, I think, come out in, in, in my work. They're, um, you know, they're objects on a wall. They're not just images into, uh, into some alternate space in the room. Uh, I was really influenced by people like uh, Frank Stella, who was very interested in the gesture of a painting um, being referenced or referencing the edge of a painting. He was making shaped works, which I have done, but I'm not doing now, but it's still, I think, very important to, to uh, think about the objectness and how the where the painting stops is is um, included in the painting it's not just where it ends I also you know same era I really liked uh, color field painting and while I'm doing still life <laughs> it's obviously not color field painting I still like that kind of uh, the, the sense of um, just color and, and uh, not monumentality maybe but but um, that the just like the flat paint is really important to the the, the thing that it is. Um, the paintings that I've got here, the subject matter is is uh, important on on some levels. They are. First and foremost, they are uh, aesthetic objects. They, they have to be. If they're going to work, uh, it doesn't matter how much content you have. If it doesn't work aesthetically, then, then no one's going to get far enough in, in, in order to, to get into what, what they are. Um, I'm, when I'm choosing the objects that I paint, I want to use things that are, are recognizable enough to have some kind of loaded content for uh, the viewer. Um, whether it's just like a childhood recollection or just um, a, a familiarity with it, which carries some content, some some meaning with it, and I try to throw some stuff together that uh, then either breaks down or defies a meaning built in between the objects, or is maybe just you know maybe a little uncomfortable. It's not not quite where maybe you'd like to sit. Um, beauty is great, and it's own sense, but I'd like to. I'd like it, uh, the paintings to have a little bit more than just the beauty. Uh, that that there's some, there's something else, um, some tension there, not just visually, but also in terms of the subject matter. Usually I don't like to talk about uh, specific meaning for a subject matter very much because I'd really rather that relationship was between the object and the representative objects uh, in the object and the viewer. I, as kind of an overarching philosophy for my art in general, the art happens between the object and the viewer and as the artist I may set up the conditions for that but I don't really have any real business getting involved after that. Um, 
so when we're talking about uh, the, the specific meaning of subject matter for me, yes, most of it has some kind of specific meaning and I have uh, an idea of what it could do. And so within my own meaning, I try to break that down as much as I can. I'm kind of counting on the quality of the, the meaning rather than the specific meaning that I have to hopefully translate into a quality of meaning for someone else without getting too much into what that meaning is. Okay. Um, the paintings are, are oil on on panel rather than canvas. I, I find the pa the panel is a just it's a much nicer surface I find to paint on. It doesn't move. It doesn't have any more texture than I give it. Uh, unlike canvas, which always has a texture unless you spend hours and hours and hours of obliterating that. Uh, long term. A panel supports oil better anyway. Oil eventually turns into something that's very much like glass, and if it's on something as flexible as canvas, even stiffened, then it's going to crack. And we've got lots of history to prove that. In terms of what I can do aesthetically with board, because I make these things myself, like completely, I can make every choice about my support. If I buy a canvas, then all those choices are made for me, and I have a limited number of things I can do. So the way that I actually work on these is I'll paint the, the, the painting on just the panel, quarter inch panel, no cradle on it, and then when it's dry I'll take it to my shop and I'll make some decisions about what I want this thing to be. So occasionally it ends up being framed, but usually because I really like including the edges of my, my, um, my compositions include the edges, they don't end there. I can decide that, okay, this needs to be four inches deep, or six inches deep, or three inches deep, or whatever, and I can put that on after it's painted, and because it's wood, and I can do all that with glue, I can make every choice, and I don't have to leave anything for someone else to, to, to decide for me. Uh, and I think that's important if uh, for, for an artist to do. You don't necessarily have to make every choice all the time, but if you have the option, why wouldn't you? Um, it's going to make better work. Or not, if you don't make good choices. <laughs> but that's, that's part, of, part of what you know, makes good art versus bad, is that you make good choices rather than bad ones. <laughs>